febrile uh, fits or we call it the febrile seizures uh, is a very common childhood disorder. They affect about 2 to 5 percent of uh, children between the ages uh, from uh, 6 months up to 5 years of age. So most of them, uh, by the time they reach uh, 6 years of age, uh, usually they outgrow the febrile seizure. And if you look at the epidemiological studies, uh, higher risk of having febrile seizures probably in the first three years of life. So usually beyond three years, it's still possible that you may have febrile seizure, but the risk kind of like a drop uh, substantially. Technically, what we mean by febrile seizure is occurrence of a seizure in the setting of a febrile illness. There are two uh, type of uh, febrile seizures. The first one we call simple febrile seizures, then the second one we call uh, complex febrile seizures. Simple febrile seizures refer to seizures that last less than 15 minutes. They only occur once in the 24 hours of the illness and they are generalized in nature. That means they affect both your hands and legs with stiffening and jerking and with a loss of consciousness. A various uh, complex febrile seizures refer to seizures that last more than 15 minutes and uh, they may have two or more seizures within the 24 hours of the illness and the seizures are focal in nature which means they affect maybe just one half of the body or with a loss of awareness uh, without any jerkings of the hands and legs. The reason why we classify them into a simple and a complex febrile seizure is because uh, statistically Children with uh, simple febrile seizures, the risk of having epilepsy is uh, low, which means about 1-3%. to Whereas uh, complex febrile seizure, the risk of having epilepsy is about uh, 5%, so slightly higher compared to the simple febrile seizure. As compared to the general population, the risk of having epilepsy is about 1%. So if you take all this into consideration, for children who have uh, febrile seizures, the risk of having epilepsy actually is quite low. 95 to 97 percent of them usually they can develop normally into adulthood. And it is very important to know that febrile seizure is not the same as epilepsy. Now, when we talk about epilepsy, epilepsy refers to the occurrence of a seizure without fever, whereas febrile seizures occur in the setting of a febrile illness. We feel that probably a febrile seizure to a certain extent is uh, genetically linked because uh, if there's uh, family members, either parents or siblings uh, had the febrile seizures, uh, the chances of the person having a febrile seizure is higher. But of course, there's also an environmental factor from the viruses or bacterial infections. So common infections like uh, flu and cough, urinary tract infection, bronchitis, pneumonia, there are some viruses uh, more potent to irritate the, the developing brain to trigger off the seizure. So I think a combination of two factors there. Common fear most parents have is when they encounter a child with seizures um, are two things. One is whether the child will die in the midst of a seizures and second whether uh, the seizure will cause a brain injury. So, uh, it is uh, important uh, to know that uh, febrile seizures is a seizure that occurs in the setting of a febrile illness without any sign of uh, meningitis or encephalitis. Uh, so it is a reaction of the brain to the uh, fever. Uh, febrile seizure by itself, majority of them are short. Short in the sense that usually they last less than 5 minutes in most cases. Short seizures by itself, they don't damage the brain. And uh, short seizures also, they do not, they are usually not life-threatening. Then the, the other fear most parents have is whether in the midst of a seizure, whether they'll bite their tongue and then as a result uh, causing a uh, respiratory problem. Uh, the chances of a kid uh, biting their tongue in the midst of a seizure is uh, quite low. Even if they happen to bite their tongue, this by itself won't cause any uh, respiratory problem. Uh, it's just that there may be a cut in the tongue which will heal about two to three days down the road. Uh, statistically, if a person has a first episode of a febrile seizures, there is about 30% chance that it may recur again in the next episode of a febrile seizures. There's a lot of uh, studies being done uh, on the children who have a recurrent febrile seizures. And these studies show that uh, febrile seizures does not have any adverse effect on their learning or their IQ. Yeah. 
So it is just, uh, so in other words, we, we feel that febrile seizure is a common childhood disorders, uh, which are something probably related to the maturity of the brain. As the brain matured, the risk will settle down as well. What parents uh, should do is, first and foremost, don't panic. If it is a generalized seizure, that means that there's a generalized jerking of the hands and legs with a loss of awareness and sometimes the teeth can clench very tightly, just lie the person down on the flat surface, turn the body to one side so that in the event if there's anything uh, in the mouth or any vomiting, it won't go to the chest and causing a chest infection. And after that, you just have to watch and time the duration of the seizure. Uh, there is no need to force anything into the mouth because sometimes by, by forcing things hard object into the mouth you may actually break the teeth or you may cut the oral cavities they may cause problems and sometimes we have seen cases where hard objects are put too deep into the throat they can actually induce vomiting and then the patient may actually choke from the vomitus even if you don't have any medicine at home as rest assured majority of the seizure by about five minutes or so usually they will stop so the panic button is if by five minutes the seizure are still not stopping, then we should get ready to bring the child to the nearest medical facility, either the nearest clinic or nearest hospital, where if the seizure still persists, then we can give some medication to shorten the duration of the seizure. What we worry is uh, on rare occasion, in about five to 10% of the children with a febrile seizure, sometimes the seizure may last more than 30 minutes. So, if the seizure lasted more than 30 minutes, there is a small risk that prolonged seizure may cause some subtle injury to the brain and it may predispose a person to higher risk of having an epilepsy in the future. That only occurs if the seizures are very long, that means over 30 minutes duration. Having said that, uh, uh, if you compare, there's a lot of study, a population study being done, it just shows that a lot of kids with a prolonged febrile seizure, when the seizure lasting more than 30 minutes, majority of them usually do well once they recover from the seizure. So the risk of uh, having brain injury because of the prolonged seizure is there, but they are very low. We know that it is uh, related to the febrile illness. So the common uh, perception is whether by vigorously treating the fever, whether can we prevent the occurrence of a febrile seizure. Uh, sadly to say, uh, a lot of studies have been done that vigorous use of uh, medicine to control the fever does not help to reduce the chances of having seizure. But of course, the uh, fever medicine may help to alleviate the, the uh, discomfort uh, for the child. Normally, uh, for kids who have uh, uh, infrequent uh, febrile seizures, uh, usually we say we just have to uh, make sure when the kids are, are sick, well hydrated, uh, rest well and there's no need uh, for any long-term uh, anti-epileptic medication to prevent febrile seizures. Uh, because uh, we know that uh, by using a long-term anti-epileptic medication, it may help to prevent occurrences of uh, febrile seizures, but it is not able to prevent occurrences of epilepsy. And the febrile seizure only occur when the person is sick. So uh, when the person is well, they actually do not have the risk of having uh, seizures. So we may be over-treating the the child unnecessarily if we subject the kids to one or two years of a long-term medication with anti-epileptic medicine. And then uh, we also have to take into consideration the possibility of the side effect from the medications. Because anti-epileptic medication, depending on what medicine we use, some of them may cause uh, liver damage, uh, may give rise to excessive weight gain, and some of them, the old anti-epileptic medicine, if you take it for too long, may also slow down your learning, may make a person more susceptible to attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Of course, uh, there are some children, 90% of the time, if you're having a fever, they would have the febrile seizures. Uh, in those children, sometimes uh, we do give them a, a medicine during the acute uh, illnesses for the first two days of the febrile illness to try to prevent the occurrences of uh, febrile seizures. The medicine we use is actually this family of uh, benzodiazepam, which contained uh, essentially diazepam or lorazepam. Uh, that may be help uh, to lower the risk of having febrile seizure when they are down with the fever. And uh, how we use that is, uh, so top and foremost, the kids must be a person who is uh, very susceptible to have uh, febrile seizure, occur frequent occurrences. And uh, we also know that febrile seizures 
tend to occur in the first two days of a febrile illness, day one and day two. Usually by day three of the fever, if you do not have a febrile seizures, it's a low risk of, there's low chance that the seizure will occur at day three. So we usually give uh, that medicine, either Valium or the Isopam or the family of uh, Lorazepam in the first two days of the fever. Then after that, day three, we'll stop the medication. One of the side effects of those medications is they make, they make them very sleepy, sometimes they make them very irritable and um, because of the sleepiness and irritability, they may be a bit wobbly as well. So we only use it for kids who are very prone to have a recurrent febrile seizures. Thank you.